Welcome to another video. In this video we will add authentication to our Gato game using Epic Online Services. So let's get started. If you already have an Epic Games product set up skip to the next section. If not then go to the Epic Developer Portal and click Create Product and give it a name. It will take a moment to create. Then click the Settings icon. Here you need to copy certain values. First is the product ID, then the live sandbox and deployment IDs. Now let's create a client policy so we can access the Epic Online services. Here there are different presets for peer-to-peer -peer games, dedicated servers, normal game client, etc. It is important you choose the correct one for your game. In this tutorial we will use the custom policy option as we will be using many of the Epic Online services features. Enable user required, and enable all the features and actions available. In your actual game you should only enable the minimal features that are required so as to prevent any malicious users from messing with the game. Now let's create a client. Again give it a name and choose the recently create policy for it. Then click add new client. Once that is done copy the client ID and client secret. If you have not already downloaded the SDK, you can download the CSDK. This includes helpful tools such as the DevAuth tool to use while developing. Now let's set up the Gato project. I am using Gato version 4.2. Now we need to install the Epic Online Services Gato plugin. Click download. Click install. You might see some error messages but just ignore these. Now go to project, then project settings, then plugins and enable the plugin. Then restart the Gato editor. Now let's add the authentication. Add a control node and name it login and attach a script to it. Save both the script and scene. Right-click the file system and create a new script. Name it AOS Credentials. Here paste your values from the Epic Developer Portal. Now go to the login script and update it with the following code. Let's understand what the code does line by line. The first step is we need to initialize the AOS SDK for this we pass in the product name and version. Notice how we need to create an initialize options and then pass that into the initialize method of the platform interface. This is similar to how it is done in the EOS documentation. Most of the methods of the plugin have this convention where there is an options object and then it is passed to the interface method. Some interface methods also have callbacks which we will see soon. Here we use a helper function as success, similar to this there are other functions on the AOS class. You can refer to this script and see what are the interfaces and methods available. Next we create the AOS platform by passing in the values of the Epic product from the developer portal. Here the code enables the social overlay on Windows. If you don't want the overlay you can use the respective flag for that. Next we print the EOS SDK version, if you don't want to know this you can remove this line. Here we set up logs from the AOS SDK. You can set which category and log level you want to receive. For this we connect a callback function to the logging interface callback on the EOS class. Now we can set up the authentication for AOS. In this tutorial we will use the DevAuth tool for login. The DevAuth tool is provided in the downloaded SDK from the Epic Developer Portal. The credential ID is set to the host of the DevAuth tool. And token is the name of the saved credential in the DevAuth tool. The credential type is also set to the developer credential type. You can also use the other login types for your game.
Here we create the login options and pass in the credentials. You can also set scope flags as per your game's need. Then we call the login method from the auth interface. We also need to connect a callback method to the auth login callback. Here in the login callback method we just print whether the login is successful or not. Now let's run the project. You can see the social overlay once the login is done. You can also see the output logs if any error occurred. So that's it for this tutorial. Join my Discord server if you have any bugs or suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to get the latest